some of these matrix explain um you know he talks too much i can see he does a lot of talking i'd rather have the person talking while it's going on so let me bring that back to where we need to be because i didn't ask for it to go here although i did but i didn't you know what i mean all right you know what i mean it's like saying uh what's the word i you know not i mean all right uh did you just say i yes i did now there'll hey, be no music you know what's better than a five thousand dollar pc what a five thousand oh, dollar pc that costs zero dollars bye bye nobody want to hear nothing about that bull i'm sorry i apologize <sighs> i've noticed that youtube has gone amok with advertisement it used to be just one advertisement at the beginning now they're doing three in some cases two see two i already went past it same one but i just went past it you just see me hit skip to the loo my darling uh here's another another commercial like i told you there's another commercial 22 seconds long is this one and they make you endure this okay and the reason why they earn your degree in less than 12 months for under eleven thousand dollars university of phoenix's competency-based programs and it just wants to take its time ladies and gentlemen this recap is eight minutes and 57 seconds before it starts i want to go ahead and make mention of something i noticed in this yes i did watch it and uh, a lot of people why you watch that i watched it because i watched it by the way i do understand that there is a lot of violence in the matrix series because there's a lot of guns but i also understand the premise for which that violence takes place in a fictional world <laughs> you mean non-fiction you get me it's non-fiction like science fiction science could never be fiction go ask somebody science is supposed to be the real deal that's why they're basing all their decisions on science so science can never be fiction okay thank you ladies and gentlemen in the matrix so that some of you guys most of you won't understand the matrix the original writer of the matrix is the one who put this one together of course i believe the person had some help the young lady however they didn't do as well this time around with the clues and the sub subsurface information they tried but it wasn't the same the morpheus now the one who is morpheus uh, he did all right but he was a little too he tried to be too corny now, of course, they claim he was a mixture of two different characters, but he still tried to be too corny. They tried to make him into too much of a joke. Morpheus was not a joke. Morpheus was serious. Go back and look at The Matrix. Morpheus didn't joke around. You didn't even hear him laugh. Hear me! Okay. Do, 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 do you remember? He didn't laugh. Go back and watch The Matrix. He didn't joke. Go back and watch the original matrix all three of them he did not joke <laughs> go back he didn't make jokes he stated facts shame on these people for trying to throw a new spin on the show yes it's 20 years old yes i know you're trying to go for a younger audience shame on you now that being said they introduced some different information they tried to let all of you know that all of you who are trying to get out of the system trying to get out of the matrix that they'll just end up putting you right back in and if you won't go back in then you'll be exiled that's what most of you find yourself as exiled not being able to get on planes not being able to do commerce not being able to do business oh because we got the mark okay whatever ladies and gentlemen the undertone of this matrix is there the information is there for you to understand 
that they are trying to tell you something. Now, some people say, oh, no, look how much trouble we got into when we sat up there and tried to say we're like gentlemen. batteries. Uh-oh, gentlemen. I'm sorry, y'all. This is the video ladies that I put up a gents. moment ago talking about the police, how they lie. Just coming to you well, guys good. today and to talk I'm about a couple of things. Protected by some of you. I got to get that in out of there. And I know that ain't officers. the right lie. Aren't that's the lie. The greatest group of that's guys. In, no, putting look, your life on the line every single yeah. day. And their yeah. job oh. is to catch the bad guys. The bad yes, guys. We don't want bad guys in our community. We don't want and bad so guys in our community. We have elected to pay taxes. Elected. Paying taxes. So I, uh, that video took, uh, you see, it was originally done on the 16th. It didn't go up until, I think it was today. Or was it yesterday? Okay. Okay. Do you know what I mean, friend? All right. Back to the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen, and if, if you guys have ever heard me do a video and I speak about interactions with police officers, you'll see that that one, if a person is going to be arrested, that is the better protection. I was looking at a video on YouTube by a guy who is a an attorney, and he's warning people of what not to say to the police and how to handle certain situations. He is an attorney. You'll see that he's saying exactly the same thing I'm saying. And look, I hadn't even seen his videos before. But I'm glad that somebody else is out there trying to tell you what the police are doing. And he tells you point blank that they are conducting an investigation. Nonetheless, go watch that video and I think you might appreciate it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, back to the Matrix. In this particular Matrix, they introduced a bunch of new characters. There are still the old characters, uh, the Jada Pickett Smith uh, as no, I can't Naomi, and Naomi, she is older now, you know, because this is sixty years gone by um, since the ending of the last Matrix, and she was already in her thirties or maybe forties. Sorry, ain't speaking on your age, Jada. Uh, in a movie, she was already an older person, not a mature person, just older. And here it is 60 years later, and she's still alive. Wonderful technology, huh? What it can do. Well, anyway, um, so they brought back some of the original care. Santi, that was actually pretty good. I know a lot of people appreciated Santi and the way she asked the question and her father. And so I like the way they explained their roles in this matrix. But the one who tried to act like a psychiatrist and trying to have Neil, who now he's Mr. Anderson. He wasn't so much called Neil in this episode. He was Mr. Anderson. Don't know why that was. But I guess these guys are going to explain. Now, we're not going to watch all eight minutes now. Mm -mm, this ain't that type of video. Y'all can go ahead and watch this stuff. With these people. I mean, he's already got 61,000 views. So go ahead and give him some more. All right. I don't know. You got the title right there. Follow it. Anyway, in this particular episode, they talked about how the powers that be, the machine world, has the power to activate Wonder Twin Powers. Individuals who are basically don't even realize they're not individuals that they have them all over the world ladies and gentlemen now i i thought that they because i hadn't seen it i just seen um the they called it the unreal engine number five and i saw that video talking about the unreal engine and i thought they were going to have those scenes in the movie and they didn't and i was disappointed I expected the movie to be a little bit more, a little bit more communicative, where they're having conversations, but they're also taking us to different, they even had the Medivigian there, but they're taking us to different locations and everything. They didn't really do that here. They did stick to the deja vu thing, and 
that's the other thing, ladies and gentlemen. On the Deja Vu, I really do need you all to know that when I came up with Deja Vu, saying um, the Matrix, Deja Vu moment, that video, I had no idea that they were going to focus on the Deja Vu thing so much in this Matrix. So I did not come up with the title based upon this Matrix. I came up with the title based upon a situation that had occurred that appeared to be a Deja Vu moment. And so that's why it was titled the way it was titled. With that being said, let's go ahead and let you guys know a little bit about this movie. And then we'll point out some things that's in the movie. And over the coming year, I'll point it out because I believe it's actually ongoing, on purpose. Now, of course, those of us who talk like this, we're crazy. We don't know what we're talking about. We're out of our mind. We're lunatics. We're off our rockers. You know, all that other adverbs. So pay attention. And, oh, I haven't seen this before. 1999's The Matrix opens on computer programmer Thomas Anderson, known by his hacking alias Neo, as he's visited by strangers Morpheus and Trinity. Morpheus informs Neo that his entire life is a lie and that he's actually been living in a computer simulation known as The Matrix. If Neo wanted to know more, he could take a red pill. If he wanted to return to life as he knew it, he could take the blood. Ladies and gentlemen, he was a blood. He took a red pill. Now, what I need for all of you to understand about this is you already know about how they got there. This is called resurrection. See, Neil did die, and so did Trinity. But because they were computer simulations, in this one, he actually didn't die. They preserved him somehow. Don't know how they did it. They didn't explain it in detail. They just preserved him somehow because they wanted to bring the series back. And they brought back Trinity and Neo. Now, you would have thought there was a a character when Neil got to the temple and they parked the ship. This character was there to meet him and talked about how great of a fan he was and how he was on Neil's jock and carrying his luggage and all that stuff. Didn't see him. And I didn't know why. That didn't make any sense. You would have thought that if any of the characters they would have brought back, they would have brought back him. Okay. It, because not only was he a youngster at that point, but he would have been older now. And it would have been interesting the interesting they're bringing him back into this and writing him into the script. Didn't do that. But again, they weren't trying to do it this way. The reason why I'm speaking on this, for those of you who don't know, is in this movie they talked about it's not about choice. But the choice has already been made. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea how true that is. I had somebody talking to me about free will. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no such thing as free will. Oh no, I heard somebody talk about free will the other day, so it does exist. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to the term, free. So if something is free, that means it comes with no strings attached. If you had free will, if Adam and Eve had free will, that means they could have eaten from any tree of that garden and nothing would have happened to them. Why? Because they had free will. They could do whatever they wanted to freely. Free means without consequence. That's right. Ain't nothing from nothing leaves nothing because it ain't free. Do you understand? In order for it to be free will, then it has to be free with no strings attached. There is no such thing as free will. In scripture, Yes, 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 he gives individuals the opportunity to choose, but they have a choice, as Moses said in the book of Deuteronomy. Choose for yourself today whom you will serve, is what Joshua said, certainly after that, in the book of Joshua. He said, here in his household, we're going to serve Jehovah. Moses said, if you obey, you'll have everything. If you don't obey, you're going to have maledictions. Maledictions, maladies, maladies, problems, problems, horrific problems, horrific, that's right. So it's not free because it comes at a cost. There's a consequence. There's a payment that must be paid. Pay attention, people. So free will, yeah, it could be in a figurative sense, but it's not in a literal sense because it's never free. You don't have the freedom to do whatever you want. 
That's what free will would mean, that it's your will. You get to choose, and whatever you choose, you can't be held accountable for that choice because it was yours to choose. Oh, are they trying to say you, you got the right to choose? Then it's not free because there's a consequence. Don't you understand? Well, anyway, that's one of the points they try to bring up in the movie. In the movie, they talk about people being bots and being activated. Ladies and gentlemen, is it possible that that's what the COVID vaccine is doing? You see all the movies, Resident Evil, and all these other movies that talk about people becoming zombies? Could it be possible that the vaccine... I, I, hey, hey, I'm not saying that it is. I'm saying, could it be possible that the vaccine will do that to a certain segment of the population? Hmm? Have you ever wondered why everybody's touting get vaccinated, get vaccinated, get vaccinated when the drugs have not been fully tested? I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I know that these are emergency authorized components, but they're not vaccines. They, I know they call them vaccines all day long, but a vaccine, it literally has part of the virus embedded in it. This has no trace of any aspect of the virus in it whatsoever. Imagine that. Then you heard all the hype about Omicron. Omicron. Transform. Anyway, you heard all of the information about Omicron being so devastating. And yet, they're not reporting the numbers correctly. They're saying that a person who dies of a heart attack, even though he had Omicron, died of a heart attack. No Omicron mentioned. But a year and a half ago, when people were dying of COVID, they were, I mean, dying of heart attacks, dying of strokes, dying of seizures, they said, oh, well, they died of COVID. Even though one person had a doctor, he was on his way to work, got into a car accident, and the coroner reports said he died of COVID. Why? Because they were given a lot of money for the number of deaths hospitals were having. Hospitals have made a lot of money, so don't none of y'all feel sorry for the hospital. The nurses, yes, feel sorry for the nurses. Because the nurses don't get that. The doctors and the hospital get the money. The nurses are subletting their position. All right, let's get back to the Matrix resurrection. Ladies and gentlemen, the fact that they claim in the movie that there are these individuals who have been written into the script who can be activated at any time and who are expendable. Do you? I, I, it was a nice twist. They had people who they activated and their job was to act as human bombs. They would literally jump out of buildings and try to land on top of Neil and Trinity as they're riding on a motorcycle. Nice twist. Uh, that one I didn't see coming human sacrifice where they sacrifice themselves for the good of whomever it is that controls the switch interesting huh now I'm going to say something it's going to cause some people not to be happy but I remember when Alex Jones talked about the fact that a lot of certain shootings were being done by certain individuals and not by certain individuals not going to go into detail because I don't want nobody construing my word saying that, oh, he's off for school shootings. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I mentioned insurrection in a video, and their so called algorithm heard the phrase insurrection and decided that it wanted to cut my videos off. Like I said, I'm moving over to a different network, a different um, channel. I have to forgive them for doing it because they asked for my forgiveness. I And they kind of knew. They did ask for my forgiveness. They did say they were sorry. Please forgive us. They did say that. You saw the videos I did. They watched the videos, people. You saw the videos I did talking about forgiving your neighbor in order to get the tax credit. So they purposely used the word in their apology, please forgive us. Okay. So I, they know I have no choice but to forgive them. It doesn't matter what you all think. It is That's the rule. If somebody does something wrong to me and they ask me for forgiveness, I have no choice. I told you about the young man I met when I was knocking on doors as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I haven't knocked on the door in a while because I've been 
I've been out of commission. Out of commission from Jehovah's No, out of commission from knocking on doors. But I've been knocking on phones and knocking on emails and knocking on letters and all of that. But anyway, the gentleman said to me, his wife was the pastor, uh, and I said pastor, not pasture, of a church. And that woman irritated me, but he was irritating her. He talked to me on purpose. He knew that she didn't want him talking to another Jehovah's Witness. So he spoke to me on purpose. But the very first thing he said to me when I knocked on his door, he said, you don't have to like me, but you got to love me. And you want to know something, ladies and gentlemen? I sat there and thought about the statement, and I told him, you know what? You're absolutely right. You're 100% correct. You know, and he was correct. I did not have to like him, but I had to love him because the scriptures require it. Ain't that something? See, that's how it all works, ladies and gentlemen. And he recognized it. Give him some credit because a lot of other people wouldn't recognize it. Let's get back to the Matrix, okay? We're going to skip up because, like I said, he's talking about some stuff back there that ain't got nothing to do with it. Come on now, move on up to the east side. There we go. No, this is the old Matrix. Must watch before Matrix Resurrection. Oh, no, I don't want that. See, Matrix Trilogy. Oh, they're doing the Matrix Trilogy. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I clicked on the wrong one. Whew. I don't want to do before. I already know what the Matrix is about. Let's do this one right here, okay? This is the guy that was talking, and I said, I'm going to go here. I just clicked on it because I couldn't see the whole thing. See, this is in the way. Get out of the way. What you doing in my way? Lord have mercy. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. It'll be one second. Matrix Resurrection Explain. Easter eggs. Plus Easter egg. Easter egg. Easter egg. Ladies and gentlemen, I... The, the ending is interesting in the Matrix Resurrection. This is one of those commercials, so give it a second. This is a 30-second commercial. Why would anybody want to sit through a 30-second commercial? So let's skip this commercial. The volume is off, and that's a good thing, because that's what I would prefer. Okay, 10 minutes. Come on, volume, turn on now. Y'all have to pardon us while we turn that volume off. Spoiler alert! That's not a spoiler. You don't know me. No? This was not a bad thing. Yeah, that was all right. Oh, by the way, let me hold, let me let me let me tell y'all something. This ain't a spoiler either. Notice after that incident right there, how Morpheus that character changes forever. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, it is uh, it is something I noticed. Free your mind. The Matrix Resurrections is here 18 years after the trilogy supposedly concluded, and as the title suggests, some things have been brought back to life. Directed by Lana Wachowski, the fourth film in the Matrix saga simultaneously picks up where Revolutions left off, while also acting as something of a meta-reboot that leaves room for more installments. There's a lot to unpack, so follow us down this rabbit hole and we'll go over everything that went down, where it left off, and what the series could do next. But before we get to all that, I have to warn you, we are about to spoil this whole movie and what we think the future holds, so if you haven't seen it yet or don't want to know anything else, now would be the perfect... Ladies and gentlemen, they're not going to spoil it because there's nothing to spoil. There, there are no catches, there are no... <gasps> oh no! Oh God! Oh no! Did you see that? Oh Lord! Okay, there were no moments like that in this movie. It is the Matrix. They can't spoil anything for you. The Matrix is all about dialogue. It's not about the special effects. Although they had special effects in this movie, they weren't, in my opinion, they weren't up to par with the last two episodes of The Matrix. Reloaded and Revolution. Okay? It was not up to par. That freeway scene, before The Matrix did their freeway scene, no one else had accomplished such. That was a whole lot of money and a whole lot of stunt and a whole lot of damage. Not this time! Hold on one second, y'all. Perfect time to find a phone booth before those agents catch you. Phone booth don't exist anymore, youngster. 
That's the oh, way, metric. what's a phone booth? Anyway, now that we're past the spoiler warning, let's talk about the big stuff in this movie. Hey, Neo's hey, no hey, longer hey, the hey, one, I or he isn't this. the only one. It turns out he just doesn't work without his better half, Trinity. Oh, and also, they're both back from the dead. We're gonna do our best to explain all that in a second, but let's break down everything else going on in Resurrections first. In the real world, 60 years have passed since the events of the Matrix Revolutions, and the truce between man and the machines has been broken. The squids are up to their old tricks, keeping most of humanity trapped in the Matrix to use them as an energy source and terrorizing all the ones who've gotten out. The reason? The machines have started fighting amongst themselves over resources, so it turns out they're not that different from us after all. Within the Matrix, Neo is back to being Thomas Anderson, but this time around he's an award-winning game developer with a mega-popular video game series called The Matrix, and he's being pressured to make a fourth Matrix game by his boss, a guy named Smith, and his studio's parent company, Warner Brothers. Yeah, it's pretty meta, and Smith is a common last name, but it is no coincidence that Neo's new boss has the same last name as his old nemesis. We'll come back to that. Trinity is also in this Matrix, but she goes by Tiffany now, and she has a husband named Chad and some bratty kids, which kind of puts a damper on any romance with oh, Thomas, even Chad. though she clearly yeah. feels a connection when he introduces himself down at the local coffee shop, which is still in the Matrix. Meanwhile, Morpheus is also stuck in the Matrix, but this is a different Morpheus. For starters, he's played by Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, and also, he's an agent. At least he is until he encounters Bugs, who's played by Jessica Henwick, who gives him the red pill. Yeah, that's right. Programs can be awoken now, too. You probably shouldn't shove mushrooms inside your USB ports. Anyway, Bugs and Morpheus you know make it their business to find Neo and wake him up, which sounds great, but if a character from a video game series that you created approached you in a public bathroom asking you to take drugs, you might question your own sanity a little bit, and that's exactly what Thomas does. No, 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 no. Luckily, Thomas has been in therapy ever since he tried to jump off a building after the Game Awards, something I think we can all relate to, especially after the Imagine Dragons performance at this year's awards show. Anyway, Thomas's analyst, played by Neil Patrick Harris, is very good at keeping Thomas from questioning reality, not to mention prescribing a whole lot of blue pills that keep him nice and docile. Long story short, Bugs and Morpheus manage to free Thomas Anderson from the Matrix and bust him out of his goo-filled pod all over again, but there's another pod right next to his, and who's in it? Trinity. We'll get to how they wound up in the Trinity. pods again in a second, so hang tight. There are some twists and turns Thank here. You. It's a Matrix film. Okay. On board. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to stop right there because, like he said, spoiler. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to let you know that there is some information in this particular film. You guys are going to have to read into it to see whether or not it's someone trying to give you a clue or someone just saying something. However, in my opinion, because, like I said, when I saw the second Matrix, the Matrix reloaded. I didn't see the first Matrix, the Matrix. I saw the second one before I saw the first one. And I told my best friend, as I told you all, they allowed this to be out in the public? Because the information they were allowing to be out in the public, you must understand, this was out, I think it was 2000, that, uh, 2002 or something like that, that The Matrix uh, Reloaded came out. You must understand, I already knew what I knew back then that's why i said they allowed this out in the public i couldn't understand that how in the world could these individuals and i watch the matrix i've seen the matrix at least 20 times all three episodes not because i needed to know the information but because i needed to see how many times they were trying to reveal something that's why i could tell people the better legend, Morpheus, the Oracle, the wonderful architect. And then there's one more that Neil had a conversation with the Oracle, the Medivision, the Morpheus, the architect. Oh, and Mr. Smith, Agent Smith. Those conversations are what you need to pay attention to. Not so much Agent Smith for the most part, but Agent Smith for the most part. See, Agent Smith talks about being awakened and set free. So you have a lot of people talking about being awakened and set free. It ain't that type of awakening. Sorry, Charlie. Spoiler alert! Okay? It ain't that type of awakening. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been cloudy, so I have to... I have a freezer that I had turned on and the temperature in the freezer is 30 degrees. I had to turn the freezer off because it is going on four o'clock and at four o'clock there's no more sunshine when she's gone. 
and so I need to preserve the sunshine, the freezer energy, so that it gets through the night, okay? Because we haven't had any sun. It's been clouds. It's been rain. But today there was sun. Today there was enough sun for me to take care of what I needed to take care of. But right now, all I see are clouds. All I see are clouds. They're thin, not very thick. So they will help me out. Uh, let's see. We're going to do that. Let's get back to this matrix thing so that everybody can understand what's going on. I don't know what the vaccines are going to do. Or, excuse me, the injections of the whatever they're calling that stuff. Because they're not vaccines. Don't take my word for it. Science says it's not vaccines. I already did the video showing you what a vaccine is. A vaccine has parts of the actual agent, the actual virus, embedded in it. Okay, that's why everybody with the flu virus, everybody says, does it have live flu virus in it? They, that, that was the number one question all the time. Okay, I'm hearing that people are now starting to get sick. Not from corona, but starting to get colds. My brothers, sisters, we haven't had colds in almost two years. Go ahead. How many people you know had the sniffles? How many people you know sat up there and was sniffling, coughing, aching, sneezing, stuffy head, fever, so they couldn't rest syndrome? How many people? That lets you know something is going on. Whatever they did, it actually put a halt to the common cold for a little while. For a little while. I'm sorry, Anita Baker. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, then they have the bots that I keep referring to. Are you a bot? Can they just activate you when they feel like? I ain't nobody's bot. Don't be sitting up and calling me no bot. You a stupid mother. You gonna be calling me a bot? I'm sorry. I, I wasn't calling you a bot. I was calling you a stupid mother. I'm sorry, I can't say the rest because there's censorship here. And this is a family channel. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. The bot thing and the control. And when you watch the movie, how they use the people to fight those who, pay attention, refuse to get vaccinated. Don't take my word for it. Go back and watch it. Go back and watch The Matrix and see how they use the people because there are two people who refuse to get injected, who refuse to get vaccinated, who refuse to get put into the system. Neil and Trinity, and then they have a group who are following them. And all of the people who are vaccinated, technically there is no vaccines in this. I'm just trying to explain something. They come after Neil and Trinity. And yeah, interesting, ain't it? Y'all need to pay attention. Y'all need to pay attention. Y'all need to pay attention. Now look, I have one more video I was going to do today, and I am going to do it. It's just not going to be anytime soon. I wanted to talk about the Matrix. That was the most important thing. I have work that I do need to get into. Uh, unlike many of you who have the 25th off, I don't have the 25th off. I will let you know that this morning, again, I've been up since 6 because I had a doctor's appointment. I do want to let you all know that the doctor I went to see was a chiropractic doctor. I bought a hammock from, uh, what is that stupid, Amazon, by a company called Trachilo. Trachilo's hammock has some screws that keep the hammock together. Well, I'm looking at the screws right now, and one of the screws is longer than the other. And that longer than the other screw should not be longer than the other, because when I got into the hammock, it was that screw that gave way. When that screw gave way, the hammock fell. Ended up injuring myself. So I immediately called Amazon because I already have a pre-existing bad back. So I called them. I told them I have a pre-existing bad back. Three herniated discs, three bulging discs in my neck. Got MRIs to prove pre-existing. I used the hammock because 
I use it to help manipulate the back so that it is not in as much pain. A lot of things went on with this. However, ladies and gentlemen, I went to see a chiropractor because I knew that I would have to. I went to see the chiropractor and he did a couple of manipulative things, but he had this device, this little clicking device, where he put it on areas of the back where most tension is. And all I can tell you is I started to, wait a minute, really? Huh. And when he finished, I said, look at that. And I actually lifted my leg up. I, my right leg, I haven't been able to lift my right leg up. I, I cannot put my pants on standing up without leaning on something. I haven't been able to lift my right leg up for years. And after that fall, it made it even worse. After he did what he did, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this actually, man, I'm actually standing taller and everything. You know what I do realize? Since I fell in that hammock, that I have been a little bit on edge, telling people where to go, uh, getting not happy with them. And I realized it was because of all the pain that I was in. And that's three straight months that I've been in pain. I haven't been able to do any real work around this house. I haven't been able to do anything real at all. All because of falling in a hammock. Well, Amazon has an insurance company called Sidwick or something like that, and they are the ones who've given me a third adjuster. But demanding that I provide this to them and that to them, I gave them video, and now they were, well, you have an appointment on Friday, and just, we need to know, blah, blah, blah. You will know when I let you know, is what I told them. In other words, don't sit up here and try to make it seem like I got to do all the work. We're about to get to the whole scheme of things. I do want to do one last thing before I cut this video off. Um, I want to let you guys know that we're going to talk about the Administrative Procedures Act. I am going to do another video after this. We'll talk about the Administrative Procedures Act and we'll talk about how to go into court and how to win. And not win like I do because when I go into court, I don't care if I win. My job is just to let them know that I ain't your average fool. You ain't average? You just a fool? You better believe I'm just a fool. I'm just a fool. Yes, I'm only a fool. And I got as far as fooling hill. Okay, so we'll be talking about that in the next video. I'll let you guys go. I would strongly suggest that you guys look at the spoiler alerts like this video to understand a little bit more about the Matrix. The next video probably won't have any music in it either. Oh, I know that you didn't play any music in this video. You haven't been playing music in a lot of your videos as of late. What's going on? I've been playing music because I haven't been in the mood. You know what I mean? In a depressing time or anything like that. Because I just, look, let me tell you what I did and then I'm going to get off this video. I just took some uh, mini shrimp, put them in a skillet, sauteed them mother and when i sauteed them who we i added some teriyaki sauce and some sweet and sour to tell you and then i made some soup cup of noodle added my mixed vegetables added some rice then i added the shrimp boy i ain't needing to be eating no more today because i was full y'all i was full i swears but i promise you that junk was on hit. Oh, look at that, mama. He going back to the 90s. He's saying it's on hit. That's like saying, uh, you know, snap and all of that stuff. He he just don't know. For cheesy and all that stuff and all if I thought, that's like they're going back to the 90s. That the boy's showing his age. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I enjoyed today. And so I'm in the mood, but I'm not in the mood because I'm about to go lay down because I am tired and I got a headache. So before I go lay down, I'll do that video and then be on. 40 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all take care, okay? Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go.